Hi everyone, I'm Frank Marsh from Lavo. Um, I'm a sales engineer for audio production. And today we're going to talk about audio follows video. Audio follows video, or simply AVF, only really became popular once digital consoles were the norm. Simply because before that it was too limited and too clumsy to be really of any use. Uh, with the um, flexibility of digital consoles also came a lot more capabilities of the audio follows video system. Um, in our consoles, we have 255 so-called events that we can link to any number of input channels or buses. Um, I've called up the main display and below you see the um, audio follows video section of this specific channel. And uh, let's first look at the different parameters that we have. So the event here is the one that determines which events triggers which channel. So at, if this is set to zero, no event is triggering anything. So basically audio photos video is uh, disabled, even though it's turned on in this case down here. Um, if I set it to one, my channel will be triggered by event number one. So as soon as event number one becomes active, my channel is triggered. So how do I activate these events? There's two ways. You can uh, have VSM, for instance, our control system, directly address these events through the management network. Since uh, VSM typically already has a connection to the management network, we can, without any additional uh, hardware or uh, uh, configuration on the console side, um, have these events triggered uh, through the network. Um, if you don't have a control system that uh, allows you to uh, address them directly through the network, you can also use um, GPI. So let's go and have a look how I set up a GPI to control any of these events. In the custom functions, I can map GPIs to audio follows video events. So if I go in here and look at this uh, assignment, so I made a new custom function, I can map up to 28 GPIs to specific events. Uh, now, in order to map that GPI, I need its HLSD or high level signal description. This is a bit technical, but it's quite easy to get hold of. So I'll just exit it for now and go to the signal list. In the signal list, any source or any destination has a HLSD or high level signal description. In my local L, I've got a subfolder with my GPIs in the back of the console. And if I select the first one and go to the system settings page, I can see in the second tab, the device tab, I can see the HLSD or high level signal description of this specific um, uh, source, in this case, the GPI. So I simply select it and copy it and go back to my custom function. And I'll make the custom function, I'll give it a name. So I'll call this map GPI to audio follows video. I'll paste the HLSD in here and I'll set this to one. And if I press OK, it will be generated. So now, whenever this GPI is triggered, event number one will be triggered as well. So let's go back to the channel. And let's have a look at the other parameters. So that's the event number. Then we have the on level. The on level is the level to which the channel is raised when the event is triggered. So that's the level the channel goes to once the event is on. The off level then obviously is the level the channel goes to when the trigger is off. Um, these are by default set to zero for on and minus 128 for off, but you can obviously also change them around and then your uh, channel will effectively close when the event is triggered. The max time is the maximum time that the uh, fader stays open, even if the trigger is longer. So if your event stays triggered for five seconds and you set the max time to one second, after one second, the fader will close again. This is also if you have specific uh, requirements and you, you don't want that fader open any longer than your audio uh, uh, lasts, then you can fade it out uh, even though the trigger is still on. Uh, the rise time is the amount of time it takes to go from the off level to on level. So it's basically the fade up, fade in time, uh, which is set to 300 milliseconds here. And then 
Opposite to that, we have the fall time, which is set to three seconds by default, which is the uh, fade time from the on level to the off level. Um, on top of that is the on time, which is the amount of time the channel stays on, even though the trigger is off. So it doesn't fade out yet. It just stays on for, in this case, 300 milliseconds. So um, when my event is turned off, it stays on for 300 milliseconds and only then starts to fade out for three seconds. Finally, we have the hold time and the hold time is a delay I can put before my rise time. So if I uh, uh, have my channel triggered but don't want it to fade up right away, I can there set the amount of time I want uh, to wait before uh, the fade in starts. And obviously I can do this in the GUI, but I can also do it on the console, on the controls. Let's go and have a look over there. The audio follow video controls are shared with the AUX controls. So in the central section, I have the AUX controls and I can flip them to the AVF control. So now I have the same eight parameters I have on the console. Uh, and I have one extra option here, I can trigger it. So if I don't have a control system or I don't get the triggers yet, I can test whether my um, settings are as I want them. So if I press this, you will see the fader go up in 300 milliseconds and when I turn the trigger off, it will stay open for 300 milliseconds and then fade out for three seconds. If I make the rise time way longer, you will obviously see that the fade in will be much slower and the fade out will still be identical. So I can play with any of these parameters. Is If I, for instance, set the max event time to uh, one second, and I'll lower the uh, rise time again. So if I turn it on now and leave it on, you will see that even though my event is still triggered, my uh, channel is already faded. So now if I turn it off, nothing happens. Next time it gets triggered, obviously it goes again, and it stays open for one second before it uh, fades out again. So that's the max event time. Same with the hold time. If I put a one second hold time in here, I press it, it'll wait one second, then it goes up and the rest is just normal. So, uh, and the on time is obviously, if I set that to uh, two seconds, as soon as I turn it on, my channel goes up. And as soon as I turn it off, it stays up for two seconds before it starts to fade down. So you can see that you can play around with these uh, controls. And even though you can have multiple channels set up to the be triggered by the same event, all these parameters are individual for each channel. So you can have five channels triggered by the same event, but they can all um, uh, move in different ways, which obviously gives you a lot of flexibility. Obviously, you can see in the channel display which channel is being triggered by which event. You can see in here the first channel is being triggered by event number one as we've just set up and I will set up the next channels to be triggered by the next subsequent events. So from um, one to eight. And as soon as a channel is triggered, that is also indicated by a little camera icon. So if I trigger each of the channels you can see that they're being triggered. And you can also trigger multiple channels at the same time, obviously. So that way you don't have to be in the audio photos video page to see uh, what's going on. And you also have the mini displays that can show you the audio photos video um, graph if you want to. And if you want to use the free controls to control the audio follows video, that is obviously also possible. You can either use the global presets by using the preset button up here. As soon as I press that, my four, in this case on the 56 uh, free controls, will be populated with the first four parameters. So I have the on level, off level, hold time and on time. And if I press the page button, I get the next four. So I get the rise time, fall time, event number, and max time. So these are global. So for all channels with free controls, if I turn the global off, I can obviously also, uh, for instance, only have the on and off level there. By simply touching the control, I have the on level in my 
um, clipboard and now I can do multiple and set the on level on all these controls here. I've got the on level. I'll do the same with the off level. I put them there and then turn this off. So now I have, without having to go to my dedicated uh, audio follows video um, controls, I have direct access to the on and off level on my, uh, on my fader strip and I can adjust these accordingly. I can also still use the faders, by the way. So if I touch the fader and move the fader up and down, the audio follows video won't uh, pull the fader from my hands or anything. So I can still uh, manual control any audio follows video controlled fader. So with these eight cameras, we can do a couple of things. We can, for instance, mimic a racetrack where each camera will have its associated mic. And as soon as they cut the camera, that mic will be opened uh, by the audio follows video system. But we need a few laps to adjust the um, rise and fall times, as well as maybe the on time uh, to adjust for the fact that they might pick up uh, the action on the next camera while it's still happening with the previous camera. So we might need to extend uh, camera one, for instance, before they, uh, when they got to camera two. And we can do that, for instance, by uh, adjusting the whole time to say a couple of seconds. And also the fall time will make that a bit longer. Let's say eight seconds, there we go. And then uh, adjust the second camera rise time also to a couple of seconds to allow it to fade in as the action comes towards it. So if we now go to camera one, Camera one is being cut, mic one is being uh, cut on air. And as soon as we go to camera two, camera one stays open for a while and then camera two comes in and then camera one fades out. So I get a really smooth transition from camera one to camera two. Uh, and I need a couple of laps to do that for each transition from each camera to each camera. And after a few laps, I will have it dialed in and then uh, my audio follows video will fully automatically um, uh, do uh, the track uh, for me and I can attend to uh, more important things than chasing the action the whole time. Another example is for instance with a football game. I have a pitch reporter that needs to cut in every now and then when he has news from the bench but I don't want that mic to be cut in and out because there is so much crowd noise around there that it uh, it's just not nice when it cuts in and out so I want to fade it in and out and I can do that by giving him a switch, which I connect to a GPI in the stage box on the pitch. And I map that GPI to my, in this case, audio follows video event number eight. And then as soon as he wants to say something, he flicks the switch, his mic fades in. So it's not as uh, rude as it would cut in. He can do his talk and when he's done, he closes his mic again. So that again takes a lot of your attention away from that, which you can spend uh, much more effectively on uh, more important stuff. Um, and to make it a bit more safe for him, you can uh, raise the whole time to, for instance, one second, so that if he accidentally switches off or he changes his mind when he switches off, as soon as he turns it on, it goes open. And when he turns it off and decides, oh no, I want to stay on, he can then change his mic within one second. And if that's not long enough, you can raise it. And as soon as he's done, he just has to wait a bit longer before his mic's to close. But uh, that way you can build in a safety as well as taking some of those repetitive, repetitive tasks away from you. Uh, and another example, for instance, is if you have two channels that you want to crossfade. Let's take channel three and four and I want to crossfade them based on an audio voltage video event. So I set them both to uh, event number three. So I'll change channel four to event number three. And then I invert the on and off level. So I'll make the on level minus 128 and I'll make the off level zero. And I also need to invert the rise and fall times because otherwise they work uh, the other way around. So my rise time will be three seconds and my fall time will be 300 milliseconds. And if I then do a cross uh, a trigger of event number three, I will essentially do a crossfade between channel three and channel four like that. 
So that way I can with one single event crossfade between two different versions of a signal or between two diff completely different signals like that. Uh, another one that I have used is if you have a wipe effect and uh, either the effect is too long and you need to fade it out or there is some noise before or after. So you don't want to basically don't want to leave that faded open the whole time. You will get a trigger as soon as they initiate the wipe. And then I'll take uh, channel five for that. As soon as channel five is being um, cut on air, it will open. And as soon as I uh, cut it away, it will fade out. If that fade needs to be slower, I can either slower it, uh, 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 make it slower or I can uh, adjust the on time. So now it will go on and it goes off after a certain amount of time. If on the other hand, I need it the other way around, I can uh, set the max event time to, for instance, one second. And then if it gets triggered within one second, my fade will be down. So the wipe effect might be longer, but my sound effect might be shorter than the actual uh, wipe effect. So the trigger is longer than the sound effect. Then I can, with the max event time, make my fader go down before the trigger is over. After these real life examples, I wanted to end this presentation by showing what can be done if we combine all this into a VSM panel. It shows us the track with the different camera positions and their associated tallies. On the left, we see a graphical representation of the mixer, and there we can assign cameras to the different faders. We can even control the CCU gain directly from within this panel. It gives us a really good visual feedback of what's going on where, and we can easily make changes to it so we never get lost of where we are in our process. And with that, I hope I've given you a good overview of what is possible with our audio follows video. Welcome to Lavo Lounge, Lavo's weekly live program bringing you product tips, application insights, new product introductions, customer interviews, interactive Q&As, and more. Don't miss out this unique opportunity to stay connected.